Beautiful. Singing and in appearance. It will now be my privilege to address you. And following my remarks, these services will conclude with the choir singing, Have I Done Any Good in the World Today? The benediction will then be offered by Elder Enrique R. Falabella of the Seventy. My beloved brothers and sisters, I greet you this morning with love in my heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And for each of you, I am grateful for the privilege to stand before you, and I pray that I might effectively communicate to you that which I have felt prompted to say. A few years ago, I read an article written by Jack McConnell, M.D. He grew up on the hills of southwest Virginia in the United States as one of seven children of a Methodist minister and a stay-at-home mother. Their circumstances were very humble. He recounted that during his childhood, every day, as the family sat around the dinner table, his father would ask each one in turn, And what did you do for someone today? The children were determined to do a good turn every day so they could report to their father that they had helped someone. Dr. McConnell calls this exercise his father's most valuable legacy. For that expectation and those words inspired him and his siblings to help others throughout their lives. As they grew and matured, their motivation for providing service changed to an inner desire to help others. Besides Dr. McConnell's distinguished medical career, where he directed the development of the tuberculosis time test, participated in the early development of the polio vaccine, supervised the discovery of Tylenol, and was instrumental in developing the magnetic resonance imaging procedure, or MRI, he created an organization he calls Volunteers in Medicine, which gives retired medical personnel a chance to volunteer at free clinics serving the working uninsured. Dr. McConnell said his leisure time since he retired has evaporated into 60-hour weeks of unpaid work, but his energy level has increased and there is a satisfaction in his life that wasn't there before. He made this statement, In one of those paradoxes of life, I have benefited more from volunteers in medicine than my patients have. Close quote. There are now over 50 such clinics across the United States. Of course, we can't all be Dr. McConnell's establishing medical clinics to help the poor, However the needs of others are ever-present, and each of us can do something to help someone, the Apostle Paul admonished, By love serve one another. Recall with me the familiar words of King Benjamin in the Book of Mormon. When ye are in the service of your fellow beings, ye are only in the service of your God. The Savior taught his disciples, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. I believe the Savior is telling us that unless we lose ourselves in service to others, there is little purpose to our own lives. Those who live only for themselves eventually shrivel up and figuratively lose their life while those who lose themselves in service to others grow and flourish and, in effect, save their life. In the October 1963 General Conference, the conference at which I was sustained as a member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, President David O. McKay made this statement, Man's greatest happiness comes from losing himself for the good of others. Close quote. Often we live side by side, but do not communicate heart to heart. There are those within the sphere of our own influence who with outstretched hands cry out, Is there no balm in Gilead? 
I'm confident it is the intention of each member of the Church to serve and to help those in need. At baptism, we covenanted to bear one another's burdens that they may be light. How many times has your heart been touched as you have witnessed the need of another? How often have you intended to be the one to help? And yet, how often has day-to-day -day living interfered and you left it for others to help, feeling that, oh, surely someone will take care of that need? We become so caught up in the busyness of our lives. Were we to step backward, however, and take a good look at what we're doing, we may find that we've immersed ourselves in the thick of thin things. In other words, too often we spend most of our time taking care of the things which do not really matter much at all in the grand scheme of things, neglecting those more important causes. Many years ago, I heard a poem which has stayed with me, by which I have tried to guide my life. It's one of my favorites. I have wept in the night for the shortness of sight that to somebody's need made me blind, but I never have yet felt a tinge of regret for being a little too kind. My brothers and sisters, we are surrounded by those in need of our attention, our encouragement, our support, our comfort, our kindness. Be they family members, friends, acquaintances, or strangers, we are the Lord's hands here upon the earth with a mandate to serve and to lift His children. He is dependent upon each of us. You may lament, I can barely make it through each day <laughs> doing all that I need to do. How can I provide service for others? What can I possibly do? Just over a year ago, I was interviewed by the Church News prior to my birthday. At the conclusion of the interview, the reporter asked what I would consider the ideal gift that members worldwide could give to me. I replied, find someone who's having a hard time or is ill or lonely and do something for him or her. I was overwhelmed when this year for my birthday I received hundreds of cards and letters from members of the Church around the world telling me how they had fulfilled that birthday wish. The acts of service ranged from assembling humanitarian kits to doing yard work. Dozens and dozens of primaries challenged the children to provide service, and then those acts of service were recorded and sent to me. I must say that the methods for recording them were creative. Many came in the form of pages put together into various shapes and sizes of books. Some contain cards or pictures drawn or colored by the children. One very creative primary sent a large jar containing hundreds of what they called warm fuzzies. I wouldn't have known what a warm fuzzy was.